All right, y'all, welcome back to the show. It's anti-war radio. We're on chaosradioaustin.org and lrn.fm. And our first guest on the show today is Fred Bronfman. He's got this great piece uh, at Alternet. He also writes for the Huffington Post. And uh, his own website is trulyalive.org. This piece at Alternet is called WikiLeaks Most Terrifying Revelation, just how much our government lies to us. Welcome back to the show, Fred. How are you? Oh, thanks, Scott. I'm doing fine. Well, that's good. I'm very happy to have you here. And this is a really great piece. Um, I guess uh, I'd, I'd like to give you an opportunity to go through some of the particulars that illustrate your point. But uh, why don't you kind of get to the bottom line here, what you're saying about all these lies? Yeah, the bottom line is this. Um, until now, when, when uh, a reporter... Uh, reports that civilians have been murdered by the United States, the government denies that the average person doesn't know what to believe. The importance of these WikiLeaks cables uh, is they reveal from within the United States government that we know we're murdering carloads of civilians, uh, that we've pa- turned over to the Iraqi police uh, thousands of people who we knew were being tortured with electric uh, drills and uh, acid and burned alive and then uh, murdered, uh, even though as the occupying force we were responsible for maintaining law and order. So these are now known. You cannot debate anymore, is is the United States uh, committing war crimes, crimes of war in uh, Iraq or Afghanistan? That is no longer a matter for debate. In fact, these WikiLeaks uh, documents would by themselves uh, su- suffice for the evidence for a Nuremberg uh, uh, t- a type tribunal. You would not need uh, you wouldn't need witnesses. You wouldn't need to prove anything. You just need to uh, publish these cables. Now the point I make in my piece is that the, the most important thing that's happened, uh, in my opinion, was when General McChrystal, to his credit, when he was the head of U.S. forces in Afghanistan, said, and this is pretty much a quote, for every civilian you kill, you create ten new enemies. Right, that's the insurgent math. That's from uh, Michael Hastings' piece in Rolling Stone, The Runaway Jet. Yeah, that was in the Rolling Stone piece, uh, and it, it wasn't just one statement. McChrystal, to his credit, implemented an entire policy trying to protect uh, the civilian population, these so-called rules of engagement. Uh, which Petraeus, General Petraeus, his successor, is now torn up. He's returned to a policy, in fact, he's escalated a policy of wholesale mass murder. Now, what this means is not only uh, objectionable to anyone with a conscience or anyone who cares about non-American human life, uh, but it, it also means that these people are endangering the United States. They are ensuring that there will be future 911s in America. While they claim to be protecting us, while they want to, they're calling for Julian Assange's death on the grounds that he has uh, violated national security and endangering Americans. What these documents document, without any question in my mind anyway, is that the people running this country are bunglers. They're fools. They have no idea what they do, what they're doing. Uh, in uh, the Middle East, and what they're doing is ensuring increasing the danger to Americans. And as I point out in my piece, uh, not only did McChrystal say that for every one civilian we kill, uh, we, we create new enemies, uh, but this is in fact is occurring and also is revealed in the WikiLeaks document. You know, General Petraeus is selling to the American public his body count. He brags like some kind of a... Uh, uh, I don't know, some guy out of a bad movie that he's locked. You know, in the last month we've had 500 jackpot kills. That's Petraeus's phrase. Uh, but the fact is, it, this is the issue, was the issue in Vietnam. It's not how many people you kill, it's how many you create. And for every uh, insurgent that Petraeus is killing, he's provoking intense hatred throughout the Muslim world. And as I pointed out, there are 1.6 billion Muslims. Now, if only one hundredth of 1% of these Muslims are provoked to take revenge on on all this killing we're doing out there. That's a pool of 160,000 uh, folks who are uh, committed to killing Americans. Um, it's beyond belief uh, what, what they're doing. You know, in Vietnam, there were 31 million Vietnamese total in North and South Vietnam during the war. 500,000 American troops could not 
uh, kill enough Vietnamese to triumph. There were always more Vietnamese coming. Why? Because of the birth rate, because of the population pool, and because... Because of that insurgent math. That insurgent math. Do you know that in the Pashtunistan alone, that is to say the 28 million... Uh, uh, there are 28 million Pashtuns in Pakistan who were murdering with these drone strikes. There are 13 million Pashtuns. That's where uh, Petraeus is now waging his present, one of the most savage offensives that I can see since Vietnam, murdering right and left with no idea who he's murdering, just killing wholesale because that's where the Taliban is the strongest. These are the families of the Taliban. Um, uh, there are 41 million Pashtuns. And we only have 100,000 troops in Afghanistan and will not be there indefinitely. And what he's doing, uh, Petraeus, in the, just in, in order to burnish his own career, to show some kind of a short-term victory so he can claim uh, that he's uh, uh, you know, a good general who's beating the Taliban in Afghanistan, he's sowing a whirlwind. Uh, the, the 41 million Pashtuns alone provide a huge pool of manpower if he keeps provoking them. Uh, he's making them stronger, and as I also point out in, in, in my article, and I think you and I have talked about this in the past, the most serious situation is in Pakistan because Petraeus is uh, launching all these drawn strikes in Pakistan, sending in what we now know from WikiLeaks, uh, local assassins as well as American assassins into Pakistan. Uh, the uh, insurgents have been joining forces it's helped Al-Qaeda. They're now providing a coordinating role. And they've moved east into the Pakistani heartland, into Punjab, into uh, uh, the uh, Karachi, which is the, the biggest city in Pakistan. It's the financial center and the biggest port. There are whole sections of Karachi now where even the Pakistani government can't go. Um, the, and let me just say one thing that I think we all ought to realize. I know it sounds fantastic to suggest that U.S. leaders are not only uh, war criminals that we know already, you know, that we've seen that they've killed over 21 million and wounded, excuse me, they've murdered, maimed, and made homeless over 21 million people in Indochina and Iran alone. But what's more important, I think, at this point, uh, is that they're incompetent, they're bunglers. And if you don't believe that, just remember the story of Iran. Uh, throughout the 1970s, uh, we were told we w gave all of our support to the Shah of Iran. He had a strong economy compared to Pakistan, and he didn't have nukes. He fell. He fell. Why did he fell? Because American policy was supporting a hated leader. They hated us there. So when he fell, the Ayatollah took over, and we've had uh, 30 years of pain, and I imagine 2011 may even see the bombing of Iran and more chaos in the Middle East. And Iran is nothing compared to Pakistan. The same mentality that lost us Iran, that lost us Indochina, that destroyed Iraq, is now um, uh, seeing Pakistan uh, fall apart. Uh, it, it's not falling apart entirely because of the United States, of course. But our policies are, are helping it fall apart. And if we'd spent a tiny fraction of the $100 billion, let's say we spent... 30 billion that we're now totally wasting in Afghanistan. Let's say we spent that in Pakistan. Maybe we could shore up the economy. If we ended our drone strikes, if we stopped uh, violating their national sovereignty, if we spent $30 billion on, why don't we send our, some of our troops to Pakistan to help them repair the dikes that they lost? Uh, then we might have a shot at stabilizing Pakistan. Instead, we're destabilizing Pakistan. This is also in the WikiLeaks cables. Uh, the U.S. Ambassador Ann uh, Patterson says that unilateral U.S. action in Pakistan risks destabilizing the Pakistani government. I wrote that years ago. I didn't know until now that uh, our own uh, embassy officials admit this and, and know this. And yet, knowing that they're destabilizing Pakistan, they're increasing and escalating into Pakistan. If I sound upset, I am. And the reason I'm upset is not only because we're killing innocent people out there, but these people are setting the stage for more 911s, which will turn America into a police state. They are, uh, I, I cannot describe how upset I am at them provoking uh, and increasing the number of Muslims who want to kill Americans. Uh, you know, one, one other point I made in my piece, Scott, is, um, uh, you know, when 911 happened, there was a huge debate in this country. 
uh, was it just some incomprehensible fanaticism that we can't understand, or did they have justified grievances? The oh, no, they, they hate us because of how good we are and, yeah. and how evil they are, and, and that's and, all. And now, hold, hold on right there, Fred. I'm sorry. We've got to go out to this break. We'll be right okay. back, everybody, with Fred Bronfman. He's got a great piece at Alternet about WikiLeaks and government lies. All right, y'all, welcome back to the show. It's Anti-War Radio. I got Fred Bronfman on the line. He's got this great piece at Alternet. You can find more at the Huffington Post. It's called WikiLeaks' Most Terrifying Revelation, Just How Much Our Government Lies to Us. And uh, you were uh, talking about the motive for the September 11th attack in the first place there. Not and the, the motive, the myth yeah, that, right. I was saying that, that most Americans were confused. The government claimed it was some kind of an incomprehensible uh, fanaticism. But the one thing we know is, if God forbid there's another t- uh, 911, which I fear a, a great deal, um, it won't, the, the reasons for it will be quite clear. It will be, uh, and this is what the Swedish, this is a quote from the, uh, uh, the Swedish bomber who almost succeeded in Sweden. Quote, so will your children, daughters, uh, brothers, and sisters die like our brothers, sisters, and children die. The, the Times Square bomber said the same thing. In other words, if um, Petraeus and Obama and our, our, our uh, security establishment are creating a situation in which uh, thousands, maybe tens of thousands of people are now motivated to kill Americans for pure revenge for the hundreds of thousands of Muslims we've killed since 911. Words, whatever you think about what, what caused 911 in the first place, since 911, our leaders uh, have murdered hundreds of thousands of Muslims. Um, uh, and the people, and we know already, because many of the people who have been uh, tried to bomb us and say, I'm doing it in revenge because you're killing our people, we're going to kill uh, your people. Uh, I personally think this is insane. I think anybody who thinks that General Petraeus can take on the entire Muslim world and, and kill all the people who want to kill us is, is, is nuts, and it's, it's against uh, all evidence, and it's against what uh, General uh, McChrystal himself said. Now, I'm sorry, anyone listening to this might think I'm being uh, rhetorical here, so let me just read you one or two uh, uh, key quotes from the wiki, from actually, in this case, this is from the uh, New York Times description of the WikiLeaks uh, documents, and let me just say that the headline... Listen to this. I think this is one of the most uh, important things. This is the New York Times headline on July 25th for what Julia Assange has given us was, quote, view is bleaker than official portrayal of war in Afghanistan, unquote. In other words, the documents by American officials themselves say something entirely different than what they've been telling the American people. Um, this means that they've been lying to us. Uh, this means that even the U.S. mass media, New York Times is admitting here that even they didn't get the story right. It wasn't until Julian Assange came along and released these documents that the American people actually found out what their leaders are doing in, um, uh, in Afghanistan. And I think we owe uh, Julian Assange, rather than threatening him with death, we owe him a debt of apology. Now let me just read you a New York Times description uh, this is just one example. Uh, they read all the documents. Here's how they sum them up. Incident by incident, the reports resemble a police blotter of the myriad ways Afghanistan civilians were killed, not just in airstrikes, but in one and two, in shootings on the roads or in the villages, in misunderstandings or in a crossfire, in chaotic moments when Afghan drivers ventured too close to convoys and checkpoints, unquote. Uh, the Guardian the same day, a huge cache of secret U.S. military files today provides a devastating portrait of the failing war in Afghanistan, revealing how coalition forces have killed hundreds of civilians in unreported incidents. Um, they weren't only unreported. Our, uh, the military always says that the only people they kill are insurgents. This is what the American people learn. They don't understand that we're killing countless hundreds, thousands of innocent civilians, which, according to General McChrystal, is increasing the hatred of the United States. Uh, This is what we're facing today, uh, Scott, and I think 
the importance of the WikiLeaks document is this, this, this is no longer open for debate among reasonable or serious-minded people who believe in rationality. This is now officially confirmed by these documents that the U.S. government is murdering people, it's covering up its murder of, of civilians, uh, it's uh, uh, denying that it ever murders civilians, and the other side is stronger than it's ever been. Uh, th this is a, the situation we're facing, and uh, I, I, as you can tell, I'm upset about it. Uh, first of all, I, I happen to object to killing civilians anywhere, but secondly, in this particular case, uh, the, the, our own U.S. officials are endangering U.S. national security. And this is the ironic thing. They're prosecuting Julian Assange on the grounds that he's endangering national security, whereas the documents that he's revealing realize, uh, reveal uh, that, um, in fact, it's, it's our officials bungling, our officials trying to prop up a totally unrepresentative government in Afghanistan that has no support from its people, this is also revealed in the documents, extending the war into Pakistan, creating many more enemies than he's killing. Uh, all of this uh, uh, is in a very alarming situation for anyone who cares about this country. And, and I, I would even go so far as anyone listening to this broadcast is the leaders of our country are endangering your life. Mm -hmm. And uh, Well, you know, the thing about it is, is it, it, as you portray it in your article as well, it's this mosaic of lies from beginning to end and really beginning with September 11th. As you said, they pretended this attack just came out of the clear blue sky to this day. They pretend there's no other motivation for it other than Islamic extremism. And once somebody's Islam is extreme enough, they start killing good, innocent white people or whatever they want us to think. And when the fact is that history began before September 11th and the blowback that you talk about from, you know, the risk of tearing Pakistan apart and the kind of consequences we could face from that, we have to recognize, you know, kind of in total the, to undermine this whole mosaic of lies, the first lie. And, and the truth is that we were doing the very same thing uh, in different contexts before September 11th, and that's what got us attacked. More than anything else, it was the occupation of Saudi Arabia from which to blockade and starve and, and, you know, bankrupt a million people to death in Iraq in the 1990s that got us attacked on 9-11. And that's the whole thing that Americans can't face, because they could even maybe agree with a lot of what you say, Fred, and say, you know, maybe they're not using the best tactics over there in fighting this war, but what are you going to do? They started it. When the truth is, no, they didn't. This country started it. The Arab, there's no Arab caliphate occupying North America. It's the other way around, and it's been that way for much more than 10 years. Well, there's a lot of truth in what you're saying. I mean, the, you know, I, well, I forget the exact number, but I believe 13 of the 21 hijackers were Saudi Arabians uh, who grew up under a totally unrepresentative government. Right, and the rest were Egyptians, and one was from Lebanon but was raised in Kuwait. They were all from countries friendly to the U.S. None were from Iraq, Iran, or Syria, the so-called rogue states. Yeah. And, and they grew up under a totally oppressive, uh, I mean, the, the, the people running Saudi Arabia are the most corrupt and filthiest people on the face of the earth. Cutting, they stone people for adultery and for misbehaving sexually while they run around the world spending billions of dollars buying up prostitutes and having orgies. I mean, they... I mean, anyone growing up in Saudi Arabia would hate them. Now, by us supporting this kind of behavior, they hate us. <laughs> I mean, it's just so obvious. And even before you get to, the, to, to anything else, I mean, if, I, if any American grew up in Saudi Arabia, I assume they'd hate, the, they'd hate their government unless they were one of the, the princes. But let me read you something that really struck me particularly, uh, and I want to quote to you uh, Hamad Karzai, the, our present president of Afghanistan, and I think really this quote sums everything up in a nutshell. Um, uh, uh, as you know, the United States is now, uh, Petraeus has tripled airstrikes, uh, he's quadrupled assassinations, he's brought in 9,000 U.S. assassins who are murdering people around the clock without a trial, without any evidence, without any oversight, that, it, that it, other than uh, Petraeus's word that there are so-called insurgents. And the president of Afghanistan, we're trying to build a democracy, and Afghanistan has begged Petraeus to stop with these night raids. 
They're breaking into people's homes, hundreds of people all over Afghanistan, three or four in the morning, screaming at the top of their lungs, terrorizing the women and children, and then either murdering, uh, torturing, and or imprisoning the I'm men. sorry, Fred. I have to stop you for just a minute. We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back, everybody, with Fred Bronfman from Alternet. Night raids, drone strikes. All right, y'all, it's Anti-War Radio. we got Fred Bronfman on the line here, and uh, we're talking about war crimes, this time in Afghanistan, and uh, David Petraeus' loosening of the rules of engagement, especially for air power and, uh, I guess, uh, special forces raids in the middle of the night. Uh, you were addressing, Fred, uh, Hamid Karzai's pleas to stop the night raids. Yeah, I mean, if you want to know what they're like, just remember any of the Nazi World War II movies where they break into people's homes in the middle of the night, screaming at the top of their lungs. Uh, the kids and, ch- and women are traumatized for life, and they drag the men off, and they either murder them to- and or torture them and or imprison them for, uh, 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 for indefinitely with absolutely no evidence, no, no trial, no chance to prove your innocence, purely an ac- accusation. Now, this is what... The president of Afghanistan, the person, remember, we're bringing democracy to Afghanistan. And he said, the raining homes at night, terrible, terrible is an exact quote, a serious cause of the Afghan people disenchantment with NATO and the Afghan government. How can you measure the consequences of it in terms of the loss of life of children and women because you have captured Talib Bey? And who is this Talib Bey? Is he so important to have 10 more people killed? civilians who determines that well so what happens a lot of times too is afghans especially pashtuns they're the type that when they hear a loud ruckus in the middle of the night at the next door neighbor's house they go outside to see what's going on and back him up and the whole neighborhood ends up getting waxed they're all exactly. a bunch of insurgents now what you have is the president of afghanistan calling general petraeus a war criminal he's accusing general petraeus of killing civilians secondly um, General Petraeus has refused Karzai's request. So we've put in the president of a country, we say we're trying to build a democracy, but he has no right in his own country to tell um, Petraeus to stop with the night raid, stop with these assassinations. Another quote, just in case, I, 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 don't, I, always, I don't want to sound retarded, I'm trying to back up what I'm saying with facts. This is an exact quote from General McChrystal in March 2010. He's talking now about the U.S. murder of civilians at checkpoints. Quote, we have shot an amazing number of people, but to my knowledge, none has ever proven to be a threat. Unquote. So we've shot hundreds of people at these checkpoints. None has ever been proven to be a threat. Now, that's face-to-face killing. When Petraeus triples airstrikes, uh, and, and sends them out in the middle of the night, I mean, if we're killing uh, civilians at checkpoints where we can see them, obviously he can't see anybody who he's killing uh, at night. This is simple mass murder. Now, that would be objectionable enough on moral grounds, but I keep coming back to my point that if McChrystal's correct, that for every civilian we kill, we create 10 new enemies. Let's say he's off by a factor of 10. We only create two new enemies. Um, we are sowing a whirlwind which is going to kill Americans. And I think our biggest problem as a nation is really a psychological one. We turn to leaders for protection. So when they tell us they're protecting us, we tend to believe them. It's, it's, it's who else is going to protect us if not our own leaders. And I think the hardest thing for Americans to grasp, and this is not a liberal issue or a conservative issue, is our leaders are not protecting us. They're endangering us by the, the behavior that these WikiLeaks cables Reveal and therefore, if far from threatening Julian Assange, the person, the people we ought to be bringing under control is our own leaders. Right. After all, uh, here's an entire world empire worth of secrets to be leaked. They're not the secrets of a humble commercial republic minding its own business over here. Uh, the, right. the the secrets being leaked are, as you say, about war crimes in Iraq and Afghanistan and Pakistan, uh, not to mention Yemen and Somalia. And, you know, I think that you really hit on the most important point there, Fred, when you talk about the unraveling of Pakistan at the hands of American intervention there, turning that entire society against us for no good 
reason, no explainable reason, other than, I guess, if you're a general, you want to keep waging war. But for the rest of us, they are uh, potentially creating that clash of civilizations the neocons have been trying to get us to believe in and embrace this whole time, that it must be the future of mankind is the West versus Islam from here on out or whatever. And, and it seems like we're... Maybe it's already too late, but it seems like, you know, Pakistan unravels, as you said, uh, perhaps an air war against Iran and the unintended and, and predictable consequences of that. Uh, it, more and more intervention in Africa. seems like we really could be getting to a tipping point here where it really does become a war against all billion Muslims because all billion Muslims have to decide to defend themselves and join up against us. Well, and in the meantime, you know, there are 1.6 billion Muslims. It doesn't, you don't even need more than 100 of 1%, as I pointed out, to get angry enough about this, to have created a pool of 160,000 Muslims who want to kill Americans. And uh, if it's two-tenths of 1%, that's 320. If it's 1%, you know, you're up to uh, millions. And, and this is a very, uh, you couldn't have a more serious situation. Now, one thing I want to mention about Pakistan that actually surprised me is they did a poll of the people of Pakistan. Fifty-nine percent consider America their enemy. But the interesting statistic was that 64 percent want better relations with America. The reason they consider us their enemy right now, besides they believe that we're tilting towards India, which is true, uh, but in addition to that is they're very angry about the drone strikes. And they're very angry about the uh, infringements on their national uh, sovereignty, uh, which are, you know, the WikiLeaks revealed that we, we have stationed special for, U.S. special forces in Pakistan, which is now revealed to the people of Pakistan. They would have found out one way or another. And let me mention something even worse than all this, Scott, that I've, just, I've written a second article about that, which uh, I hope will be published on um, Truth dig uh, today or tomorrow, and we could do another interview on it if you're interested. The the most disturbing we haven't even talked about the most disturbing revelation from the WikiLeaks document is that um, the United States government itself is terribly worried that forces hostile to the United States are going to get a hold of Pakistan's uh, nuclear materials. Point one. Point two. Uh, the U.S. government in these cables says that if we continue to uh, do these unilateral actions in northwest Pakistan, like drone strikes and so forth, we risk destabilizing the Pakistani state. Uh, I believe that it's, anyone reading these cables can only conclude that number one, uh, the U.S. That, that, that number one, Pakistan's uh, nuclear stockpile is the most unstable in the world. It's the most dangerous in the world. It's the least tightly guarded in terms of people sneaking off with materials. This is what the U.S. Ambassador Patterson says she's worried about. But secondly, that we're making this more likely. If, if 59 there are 130,000 people who work on, who go every day to work with Pakistani nuclear materials. If, if let's say, uh, they're not like the general population where 59% regard us as the enemies. Let's say 10% regard us as the enemy. Let's say 5% regard us. That's thousands of people who have access to nuclear materials who regard the United States as the enemy. All right, well, we're just going to have to leave it there and let everybody in the audience's imagination pick up from there, but it isn't good. We could all see the possibilities there that we're, our government is playing with there. Thank you very much for your time, Fred, and for your great work. Everybody, that's Fred Bronfman. His uh, most recent article at Alternate is called WikiLeaks' Most Terrifying Revelation, Just How Much Our Government Lies to Us.